welcome back to Bear News on this chilly Thursday afternoon. I'm Andrea Grajeta. Students woke up to a snowstorm today. Campus snowplows tried to make the walk around campus manageable. The snow picked up around 9 a.m. this morning and continued until the early afternoon. Now to Angel with some more updates on the weather. Winter has finally come to northern Colorado as the snow starts to pile up around campus. Our day starts with just a bit of leftover snowfall in the morning before clear skies move into the afternoon with a high around 30 degrees. The weekend gets going on Friday with clear skies and a high around 40 before dropping to around 10 degrees at night. Saturday and Sunday look to be partly cloudy and sunny with the temperature sticking around the low 40s and lowering into the teens at night. You might want to bring an extra jacket with you just in case and watch out for ice patches on sidewalks and while driving. And now back to Andrea. It was a snowy morning yesterday as a fire broke out in East Greeley. The smoke was visible from UNC and ash was falling in neighborhoods close to 16th Street. Students saw the fire from the UNC campus. Greeley Fire Marshal Robert Fries reports six fire engines, two ladder trucks, two battalion chiefs, two staff chief officers, a safety officer, and two investigators were on the scene of the fire. Staff reporter Matilda Preisendorf was on the scene of the fire after it was contained. A fire broke out today at the 300 block of 16th Street around 11.30 this morning. A woman located on the 18th Street of 3rd Avenue said she was in the shower when she heard a loud bang and rushed outside to see smoke coming from a building about a block away from her. Greeley Fire Department has confirmed that no one has been injured in the fire and it has been contained. The start of the fire has not yet been identified, but they will continue to investigate. I'm Matilda Preissendorf with Bear News. There's currently no update on the fire, but we will continue to keep you updated on any new information. UNC's interim provost, Lisa Volendorf, met with reporter Kelsey O'Hara Tuesday to talk about her responsibilities here at UNC. Volendorf has been working at UNC since July 1st of 2021. She has worked in higher education for over 26 years. And what I think is the most amazing aspect of the work that we do every day is we are the key drivers of social mobility in this country. Wallendorf has also been a professor of Spanish, a department chair of languages, Senate chair of faculty Senate, dean of humanities and the arts, provost, and worked in support of emergency and crisis management. She even worked with UNC President Andy Feinstein at San Jose State University when he was a provost and a senior vice president. One of the reasons Wallendorf believes UNC is unique is that we are a student first university. Oh, that was one of the reasons that I said yes to President Feinstein because I believe that all universities should be students first, but not all universities really have that as an express priority. With being a student first university, Wallendorf said that UNC moves more students to higher social classes than any other college in the state. To keep students a priority, Wallendorf has a goal for UNC to be considered a Hispanic serving institution. To meet the requirement, a college has to have 25% of their student popula population identify with being Latin. UNC's population is at 24%. With having student first frameworks and working towards cultural goals for the students, Wallendorf said that she is pushing for more equity inside of the university. Every student at UNC has the same opportunity to succeed, regardless of where he or she or they come from and what their educational background is or was, and their race and ethnicity and their Pell eligibility and their first gen status. My belief is students first means you meet every student where they are and you give them all the exact same chance to be successful. Wallendorf has only been at the university during a global pandemic, which has changed the way she does her job. One of the biggest things she learned while working during the pandemic is how students gain in-person interactions. So part of what we're learning is that people need different kinds of support depending on how they're impacted. Wallendorf said that data found many students who had remote classes came for writing help and tutoring sessions in person. One thing Wallendorf loves about the UNC community UNC is such an incredibly special institution. We attract people who love the institution, who have a love of place, and who have a real commitment, not just to the UNC of today, but to really building a better university for students and for, for the decades to come. So to me, UNC is very much about a sense of place, a sense of community, and a love of the bear. To watch the entire interview with Wallendorf, head to our YouTube page. 
Tune in to our next one-on-one -on -one interview with President Andy Feinstein happening February 15th. It's called the Bearded Bear Barbecue, but no bears were harmed in the making of this barbecue. They're looking to serve bears, not serve bear. The Bearded Bear Barbecue is a new restaurant located on 16th Street in downtown Greeley. The Bearded Bear Barbecue set up shop in 2021, taking the location of Hog Wild Barbecue, which shut down their Greeley location due to COVID-19. The Bearded Bear is veteran owned and specializes in serving Southern style barbecue. The restaurant hosts a smoker in the back that they use to smoke signature items. Their menu features brisket, pulled pork, hot links, ribs, and more. Their sides include mac and cheese, potato salad, green beans and bacon, and baked beans. Veterans, active military service members, first responders, and students can enjoy 10% off their food at the Bearded Bear. Here are a few words about the menu from current employee Kelly Schwartz. I don't know, we have these pulled pork sliders that are really good. They're a really good deal too. It's like, you get two of them for $5 for a bag of chips. And they're these just like cute little sandwiches. They're just cute little pulled pork sandwiches. And we have really good mac and cheese and it has bacon on it. Everything here has bacon on it for some reason. So if you like bacon, we have a lot of bacon. Good news for those looking to get their bacon fix. If you're looking for your next spot to relax with a cocktail, make sure to stop by after hours. Located at 4111 Center Place Drive, they have everything from lavender mules to classic old fashions to fit your taste. If cocktails aren't your thing, they also offer a variety of beer and wine. After Hours opened last week, but they already have made a name for themselves with their creative cocktails. Their cocktail, Smell the Roses, is a must try with its sweet floral taste and a, and a hint of lemon. There are so many small, amazing businesses in Greeley to support, and After Hours is a great spot to catch up with friends or meet new people. Now we go to Robin with Bear News Tunes. Thanks, Andrea. Welcome to Bear News Tunes, where we tell you what's new in music this week. Ever since Spotify announced their exclusive rights to the Joe Rogan Experience podcast in 2020, both Joe Rogan and Spotify have received consistent backlash for the podcast's frequent platforming of conspiracy theorists and far-right figureheads. This week, musician Neil Young said that he would pull all of his music from Spotify if Spotify continued to host episode of Joe Rogan's podcast, which contained misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine. Yesterday, Spotify began to remove Neil Young's discography off its platform. In response to Spotify's decision, Neil Young released another statement that included the following, quote, I sincerely hope that other artists and record companies will move off the Spotify platform and stop supporting Spotify's deadly misinformation about COVID, end quote. Spotify responded to Young by saying that the company has removed thousands of anti-vaccine podcast episodes over the past two years, although they did not say whether they planned on removing the Joe Rogan experience episodes in question. Last week, events promoter Live Nation announced the upcoming When We Were Young Festival to a mix of fanfare and skepticism. While we reported on the massive emo revival festival's announcement last week, social media users have raised concerns over the event's legitimacy since then. While, or while event organizers initially only scheduled one date for the festival, they added two additional dates within the past week due to high demand and have left open the possibility of adding even more dates. Still, all three dates will feature almost the exact same bands performing on each day with only minor lineup changes for the third date, and tickets only allow admittance to one day each. Other social media users have pointed out that Live Nation was the same company that promoted Travis Scott's 2021 Astro World Festival, which led to 10 deaths in a crowd crush. In a, in a statement released to Vice Magazine, Live Nation responded to these concerns by clarifying that the company is working closely with local authorities in Las Vegas to ensure the safety of staff and attendants. In addition to safety concerns, metal band Bring Me the Horizon's lead singer Ollie Sykes faces accusations of domestic abuse stemming from a statement from his ex-wife released in 2016, causing others to criticize event organizers for including the band in the festival. Miami authorities arrested Ray Schremmerd member Slim Jimmy on Tuesday for an alleged uh, uh, physical assault on his girlfriend. However, in an Instagram post, Slim Jimmy's girlfriend denies ever claiming that the assault occurred. She says that police arrived to the couple's apartment because they were having a, quote, loud argument, 
and that she told them several times that nobody was harmed. Yesterday, TMZ reported that the rapper's case was heard in court and that he is now released on cash bond while awaiting a verdict. Last Thursday, hard rock singer Meatloaf died at age 74 due to complications from COVID-19. The singer was openly critical of social distancing regulations and mask mandates, stating this past August that, quote, if I die, I die, but I'm not going to be controlled. Several celebrities paid tribute to the late musician, including pop singer Cher and former President Donald Trump. And finally, each week on Bear News Tunes, we want to give an overview of what new music came out in the past week, then spotlight our pick for the best song of the week. New songs were released by Charlie Puth, 2 Chains, Denzel Curry, and others. For the most part, there weren't too many surprises. Charlie Puth's Light Switch is a clean and inoffensive dance pop song, albeit with some awkward lyrics, as is typical for a Charlie Puth song. Meanwhile, Denzel Curry surprised absolutely nobody by releasing yet another solid hardcore hip-hop track with a dynamic energy and an effortless beat switch. But the song we want to highlight as the Bear News Tunes song, song of the week is Four in Air by And So I Watch You From Afar. The Northern Irish instrumental rock group is no stranger to theatricality, but the promotional singles for their upcoming album Jettison seem to be laying out the groundwork for a full-on experimental epic. The song Four in Air is, as the title suggests, the fourth of these promotional singles and begins with a gravelly spoken word segment that cryptically lays the groundwork for a slow-building instrumental rager. The repeating groove that locks a tight drum pattern in with a simple palm-muted guitar line builds with other instruments, including a string section, until it reaches a loud cinematic finish. While the story being told on these spoken word segments may not be clear until the release of their new album in February, this song has me on the edge of my seat. What new music do you want to see cover next on Bear News Tunes? Let us know at bearnews98 at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at bearnewsunco. What should you expect when you're expecting? Probably not the wrong baby. Today, we talked to Andrea about how she almost wasn't Andrea. De acuerdo a un artículo de 1998 de The Baltimore Sun, uno en cada mil bebés está entregado a la mamá incorrecta. Y afortunadamente, muchos de estos bebés sí regresan a las familias correctas. Y aunque este es mi álbum de bebé, esta no soy yo. Hoy ha platicado con mi mamá para contar la historia. En el momento en que ya íbamos a salir del hospital, eh, estábamos esperando a la enfermera para que ya nos firmara para salir del hospital cuando en vez de llegar y, y llegó la enfermera, pero para llevarte. Eso es cuando mi papá Oscar se dio cuenta que las enfermeras andaban cambiando la ropa de los bebés. Ahí fue que nos dimos cuenta que la otra familia también ahí estaba y ya nos dijeron las bebés están cambiadas. Afortunadamente, los brazaletes de identificación fueron correctas. Ya leímos que ahí decía una que era Baby Grajeda y la otra era Baby Flores, si me acuerdo mucho de eso. Simplemente confía si nunca le, le leí la pulsera. Además del estrés de tener la bebé incorrecta, había problemas de comunicación porque la enfermera no platicaba español. Nosotros cuando nos, nos contaron eso, pues enten me entendimos a la mitad, ¿verdad? Pero ya después cuando las cosas se calmaron y mientras nosotros estábamos en un cuarto esperando que a las bebés les estaban haciendo la prueba del ADN, entonces ya fue cuando llegó un intérprete, nos explicó todo, cómo había estado todo. Y una cosa que no hicimos y que ahora sí me arrepiento mucho es no haber intercambiado los teléfonos para seguir teniendo una relación y así uh, ver a la otra niña después. Entonces, si tú también tienes una historia muy similar y naciste el 28 de febrero de 2001 en Brighton, Colorado, debemos hacer amigas. If this story sounds familiar, please reach out to us at bearnews98 at gmail.com. And now to Hunter with some updates on UNC Sports. Welcome to the Bears Sports Update, and we've got plenty of highlights for you featuring big time shots and clutch goal scoring. We begin with UNC Hockey taking on Wyoming at the Greeley Ice House, and the Cowboys open the scoring early with a slick goal to make it two to nothing. Wyoming would make it three to nothing, 
but the Bears got on the board with Cade Boring stuffing that one in. And that goal sets a new school record for most goals scored by a Bear, but UNC still trails. In the second period, the Bears look to get within one, and they do with this slap shot from Nick Sheridan to make it 3-2. to two. Now down 4-3, to three, Ashton Martinez enters the zone and fires one top shelf to tie the game at four. We're now in the final minute of the third with the game still tied, and who else but Cade Boring putting one top shelf for the game winner. And that one came with 37 seconds left, and the ice house goes crazy, and the Bears hang on and win 5-4. to four. On an additional note, the Bears went to CSU the next day and won by a final score of 11-4. to four. You heard that right. The Bears scored 11 goals against the Rams. I looked at the score and initially thought it was a baseball score. The Bears look to keep the offense rolling this weekend as they head to Arizona to take on Arizona State, GCU, and Northern Arizona. Now let's take a look at some highlights from women's basketball as they take on Eastern Washington. In the first quarter, Allie Downing gets the Bears on the board with this three-pointer. Then Callie Boyles follows Downing with another three-pointer. But later on, Hannah Simital begins to find open space, and if you leave her open, she's going to make you pay. She gets this pass and buries her second three-pointer, but she's just getting started. She runs the pick and pop, and watch this. Boom! Nothing but net. Then she comes right back down, and boom! Hits another one. Then she finds open space and again hits her fifth three-pointer of the game. Simital finishes with 17 points as the Bears wrap up their first conference win of the season by a final score of 62-54. to 54. In other news, the Baseball Hall of Fame votes are in, and one notable player was left out. Barry Bonds did not reach the 75% threshold in his final year on the writer's ballot as he finished with 66% of the vote. Along with 14 All-Star selections, Bonds earned a record seven NL MVP awards over his 22-year MLB career. Most notably, Bonds holds the record for most home runs in a season with 73, and most career home runs with 762. But Bonds isn't in the Hall of Fame because the Baseball Writers Association of America believes that Bonds' use of performance-enhancing drugs disqualifies him from being enshrined. But many in the sports world believe that Bonds should be inducted into the Hall of Fame, including ESPN's Jeff Passan, who said, quote, It's just as simple as the guy with the most home runs ever should be in the museum that exists to tell the baseball story, end quote. Bonds' next chance to get in is through the Today's Game Committee, who votes on players no longer eligible through the writer's ballot. Bonds is expected to be on the ballot in December and would have to receive 12 of the 16 votes to get in. That's all for sports. Now to Andrea. Thank you, Hunter. This week's featured student is Miranda Wagner. Wagner grew up in Buffalo, Wyoming. Wagner transferred from Northern Wyoming Community College in 2019. After moving to Grayley, she started working at Westridge Animal Hospital in West Grayley. Wagner is graduating with a major in criminal justice and a minor in psychology. Her favorite class is crime scene investigation, and after graduating, Wagner plans to go into victim's advocacy. In her free time when she isn't busy with school, she loves to read. Wagner's favorite author is Stephen King, and her favorite book by King is The Girl Who Loved the Garden. If you know someone who you'd like to nominate for UNC's Featured Student of the Week, please email us at the email on screen. The Humane Society of Weld County raised over $10,000, all thanks to the Betty White Challenge. The death of Betty White happened around two weeks shy of her 100th birthday. Fans and the public were looking for a way to memorialize her. Throughout her life, White was an animal, animal advocate and lover. According to People Magazine, White worked with the Los Angeles Zoo since 1966. Her prolonged work and efforts for and at the zoo led to her being named an honorary zookeeper by the Los Angeles chapter of the American Association of Zookeepers. Because of her love for animals, users on Twitter started the hashtag Betty White Challenge. The challenge encouraged people to make a donation to a local animal shelter on White's birthday under her name. The Betty White Challenge didn't just help the Humane Society of Weld County, According to Variety, the challenge raised $12.7 million through Facebook and Instagram fundraisers. Even though it's been weeks since White's birthday, if you are interested in participating, consider donating to your local shelter. And that has been just some of the news happening around Grayley. To let us know of other news stories you would like us to cover, you can email us at fairnews98 at gmail.com or you can DM us on our Instagram page at fairnewsunco. I have been your anchor, Andrea Grajeda, and we will see you Tuesday.